Alan, what's up, buddy? Hi, bro. How are you going? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Good shit. How was uh, London? Do you trade London? No, no, I didn't trade London, no. Just kind of stayed out? Yeah. You normally only trade in New York? Yeah, yeah usually I only trade in New York, yeah. Okay. For now. Maybe when I will be like in Europe, I'll yeah. be maybe. When are you going to France? Watching. Uh, should be in July. Yeah, if everything's all right, should be July. You pumped? Sorry? Are you pumped? Yeah. <laughs> you, you do want to yeah. get over there? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit, I don't know. Because I have family here and there, it's like true. Yeah. In between both, like Can I want to stay tough. here and go there. It's a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that could be tough. I get it. It's not easy, but yeah. We uh we wanted to move to Florida, but moving away from family is kind of what kept us back. Yeah, it's quite hard. Hundred percent. So how was your uh, how was your weekend? Good. Good. Stayed at home, yeah. What? Ate out a little bit. I'm sorry, what was that? Said, uh, stayed at home, mostly. Okay. Didn't go out or nothing. So, yeah, I was just resting and uh, taking back the hours that I didn't sleep. Mm. Yeah, it's a uh, good thing to do on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Got to catch up on some sleep. You took a trade or? Yes. Yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in G, uh, yeah. not TJ, but gold right now. Let's, uh, let's break down some charts. Uh huh. Yeah. Actually, you know what? We'll start with gold since, uh, we are in this right now. So obviously last night during London, we tapped, um, 1854. So that means obviously we crossed, uh, 1850, which is an area that we were looking for on the higher time frames, And we finally crossed that. Obviously, a lot of bullish sentiment out of gold right now. But with the technical analysis that I was doing, I saw an opportunity to take a quick sell um, based on, you know, what I was seeing. But we've been kind of in this channel, not this one right here, but the bullish channel since the beginning of Q2. Yeah. And what we did was we retapped 1680. This is this was a, a kind of a big deal. We should have. Honestly, we, we could have still been in this if we uh, placed a buy right here, um, knowing that this would be a double bottom and price would continue bullish with Q2 volume um, and uh, and a lot of fundamental analysis going along with that as well. But price is just pushing up, uh, creating new higher highs, higher lows. We created the support over here last week, and we just pushed up, uh, as I mentioned, that we would do. Uh, to retest these highs up here. So that's what we did. We've kind of been in this mini channel, if you will. Right, let's check on this trade. Okay, it's doing good. Um, so we've just been pushing up, but this morning at 5 a.m., this four-hour candle opened up with no top wick and just started pushing bearish, right? Just uh -huh. reacting to 1854, 500. But why is it reacting to that? You just got to go left. And you see that you got these big rejections over here to the left. So once we break 1854, mm -hmm. we're heading right back up to these previous candle body closes, but also wick rejections. And then eventually uh, 1872, uh, we, we could just move that right there. So we're looking at 1874 right up here once we do cross this area. But it may be a little choppy getting up there, especially with these wicks over here to the left. But... We shall see. For right now, we are pushing bearish. I'm going based on the current four-hour candle. Also, the one-hour candle right over here. Strong bearish candle. One-hour candle created a top wick and then flipped bearish, right? I took yeah. this. Basically, if you take a look at this support right here, this 30-minute candle ended up pushing bullish and then flipped bearish and... um kind of close bearish over here. I took this based on the 15 minute as the 15 minute candle came down and passed a little over, over here, knowing that it's the second half of the 30 minute candle. So thinking mm -hmm. the 30 minute candle was going to flip bearish and then fill this wick over here. 
maybe it's taken a little bit longer than I thought it would, but uh, it still yeah. looks good. I'm definitely going to secure right here and move my stops good. to break even, but I eventually anticipate price maybe coming right back down here to retest the support and then continue up, but we'll see. It'll be risk-free and we'll, uh, we'll test it there. Does that we'll make be sense? securing some profits at some point or oh, no? yeah. Letting it... Securing yeah. after we fill this wick at one-to-one, -one, yeah. stop loss at break even, and then let it drop if it does. And if it yeah. doesn't, in a form of support, hit me at break even, and that means we're going to continue bullish anyway. This is yeah. kind of a riskier trade because I'm going against the trend, but we did break the nearest support, which is my yeah. rule. And uh, we kind of retested it. But right now, um, I'm, I, I only risk 1% on this. So I wanted to be conservative and, and be smart about it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yep. You trade uh, only GJ, right? GJ Gold, but I think I think I will be maybe more concentrating on GJ. Okay. Yeah, that's really. Fine. Yeah, I wanna. What I wanna do is like maybe be risking a like certain amount, maybe like forty dollars or whatever, and like maybe trying to be consistent, like two weeks, one month, or two months, and okay. at that point I will be like doubling, uh, like adding some money or whatever, but like not, not being um, in a hurry like I was before. Oh yeah, I mean, I like mean... really. Really proving myself, like seeing, okay, this month or like two weeks or whatever, like three weeks, I was consistent, wins, losses, errors, good things, like really journaling everything mm -hmm. and saying, okay, I should should be maybe like doubling the lot size or like doubling the amount of money and like slowly and steadily. I think slowly, it's slowly, yep. Yeah, it's that's the biggest thing is slowly upping that risk instead of yeah. kind of just jumping into it. I kind of uh, to be honest with you, I kind of jumped into it. Um, yeah. But, like, it was good because, and this is a good lesson for you, is you get used to putting more money on the line. Even though you're taking some losses, GJ hasn't been moving the way I'm used to. Uh, but it's still like, okay, now I'm more comfortable with risking more. And I had to go through that, and you move on and um, improve from there. Yeah, exactly. Like, like what's it was said in the audiobook, like you need really really to accept the risk, like oh yeah, all the thing is if you accept the risk like you you're not in a, you're not excited, you're not this, you're not that, like you're feeling good and you're managing it hundred percent, yeah, you gotta be okay with it, no matter what the amount is, if you lose that full thing, you're fine, obviously you're managing risk, but if you lose it, that yeah. you were planning on losing it before you even entered the trade. Yeah, that's so. that's why I really think like twenty dollars or forty or whatever like amount like that I can really understand in like in my real life the way I'm working and this and that. Then an amount like putting a ten lot and like risking uh, one thousand dollars like one thousand it's like yeah two weeks of work and like in one trade or in one night like it's just like yeah gambling. Hundred percent. 100%. So how are you feeling right now? Um, you, do you feel confident? Do you feel doubtful? Um, mm. Where's your head at? Uh, I'm a little bit, I think, between both. Like, during the day, I have, like, a lot of a lot of things happening in my head, like, good ideas, bad ideas, and everything. And I can really, I really, like, want to, um, uh, how do you say, like, like, um, Maybe, yeah, be, being listening or really to fill my head with only, like, good stuff, like, um, things take time, this and that, like, because I think it's when I see what's happening around me, like, on social media or there or, and there, like, it gets that thing, like, they're doing it, but not me and this and that, like, I think, and it's, I read the book, so I, I have, like, good ideas, Things take time, like uh, uh, be putting in risk like $40, uh, go slowly, steadily. After that, like I look a couple of stories there and these, and like it's other ideas. And uh, yeah. So when you say I, good ideas and bad ideas, do you mean trade ideas or do you mean like thoughts going no, no, no. psychologically? No, no trade ideas, but like ideas where 
with with my understanding of today i really see that like it's a lack of funds like i have like ideas because like i don't have like funds like mm. n- not trade ideas bad ideas like oh, i took a bad trade no like even out of trading like more of the yeah like the the, the bad mentality of like getting money getting money like i, I really want to i think it's like yeah like prove proving proving something to somebody like like i told you to my parents and everything mm. so okay so you're feeling the pressure from yourself to prove yeah. something to your parents okay yeah that's really what it is like because i don't know if you i was listening last day and even today like uh um, I just think I was listening the Uncle Ted was speaking about the other day Roger's course. It was uh what was it? I think about like consistency, like what to obtain in life and this and that. And he was talking about something very interesting, but like uh, that I see in myself it's the, the point that like I'm trying to prove it to somebody else trying like yeah like people I don't know what they expect from me but like myself I'm putting pressure that I need to show in my case it's my parents because other people I don't really care but like mm. it's more yeah no I 100% get that I've been there before where you know not necessarily that my parents d- doubted me and maybe they did um, but they didn't show it, but in, in subtle ways that they, they do, like, how are your parents? Are they, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, what is this trading stuff? Like, go yeah. get a real job. Is it like that? I think it's, yeah. Like, like one week, uh, maybe no, not, not even one week. I think like three or four days ago, like my dad asked me, like, do you see some progress in something? And I like, I, at this point, no, like, I don't see progress. So I told him, no, I don't see progress. Mm. And he's like, started like talking about, yeah, it's just like, it's not a real thing. It's just like gambling. It's just, it's not a, like, a, like he, he doesn't see things like I see them. I see things like, okay, I had, I don't know, like one year or whatever of failing and this and that. But like, for me, it's, it's the path and uh, like I need to go through and uh, I will get better. But like for him, it's more like during this year, no progress. So that's it. Like uh, you're just losing your time, your money and whatever. Are, you, are your parents entrepreneurs or no? My dad works for himself. He has like a company and my mother is uh, from home. Like she's at home. Okay, and how did your dad start that company? Did he start it or did he? Did someone else start it and he took over? Uh, my dad was always, uh, he's like more turned about business. He's not like a salary guy. He's like all his life, okay. he really worked for himself there and hmm. yeah, a little bit everywhere. But like, I don't know, it's more the, like, yeah, he... He's interested in like getting a business, doing things like the ent- entrepreneurship. He's quite, he believes in it, but it's in the aspect like of, for him, like casino, uh, financial markets and like all the bets and everything. He says like, it's just, you cannot win. Mm. See, um, it, it's good that he's on that side, but at the same time, uh, he just doesn't know what he doesn't know yet, you know? And um yeah. I think our parents have our best interests at heart, but sometimes they just don't know what they don't know, you know? And, and most of the time it's, you know, it's the thought process of, you know, go get a real job, go, you know, do all that stuff. But in your dad's case, it's a little different where he is an entrepreneur. Maybe he just doesn't agree with the path that you're going on, but you got to ask yourself, are you passionate about this? Even though you haven't been succeeding yet? Yeah. 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 As in, like, you you love backtesting. You love, like, you know it sucks. You know it's hard getting through those beginning stages because right now you don't have much capital, and that's where it's the hardest, where, yeah. you know, it's it's you're very susceptible to over-risking, over-trading, and wanting to make that money right away, right? And 
you got to ask yourself if you really love just building the skill and getting better and better at it every day. Maybe you just got to work a little bit harder at it. Do you think like yeah. you're giving it 100% or do you think maybe you're giving it 50 to 80% and you could be doing more? Yeah, I think I'm not definitely like not doing enough, like not, I like not that. enough this and that. Yeah, I like the honesty. That's uh, a lot of people say they are, but they really aren't. So yeah, no. that's good. Okay, so now you know that you have room to improve. You know that you haven't given it your all yet and that this is the hardest market in the world, but you can definitely get it because if, you know, other people can do it, if other people can be profitable, some some people that you look up to, why can't you? You have all the makings to have it. That's why you're in here, right? You think the right way. You do the right things. You got a very organized setup over there. You know, you're, you're determined to get this thing right. I know sometimes doubt creeps in, but the, the best ones out there and the best people out there in, in entrepreneurship and business, or whatever, they don't pay attention to that one bit. Yeah. They don't pay attention to their emotions. They pay attention to logic. They know, okay, if I continue to do this, if I continue to work at this and give it my all, at some point, it's going to start turning around. And you're going to start seeing those hints, those those little clues that, okay, it is turning around right now. You know, I am feeling better about this. I am doing much better. Yeah. But, you know, the, the only way that you're going to get that is if you put the work in. The only feeling, the, the only way you're going to get that feeling of confidence, um, it, it's only from the hard work that you put in. Why do you think people talk so much shit in fighting, in sports, or in anything? You think they, they, they can talk that shit without putting the work in? Yeah. All that shit talk comes directly from the work that they put in. Knowing that they're outworking their opponent and they can say whatever they want. Right? Yeah. And I'm not saying you want to talk shit or, or be like that. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's where the confidence comes in is when you're putting that work in, when you're back testing every day. And I'm not saying sit in front of your computer for 8 to 12 hours. I'm saying yeah. get at least an hour or two a day of back testing if you can. You know, when you get off work, I know you have that emotion of, like, just wanting to uh, relax or uh, take a break or whatever. And by all means, you could take a break, but time that break. Make sure that your, your minutes are accounted for and your hours are accounted for. Make sure you come home, get something to eat. Watch a quick YouTube video of, of a little entertainment. You know, you just had a long day at work. And then right back to the charts. Exactly. You, your goals and, and everything that you're working for is so much more important than anything, any kind of entertainment that you're you're looking forward to. Yeah, you know, I think it's... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, like really what I want to do and like I, I have like, like it's hard for me. It's like really getting consistent in things that maybe are hard, but like that I should do, like back testing, journaling and all these things. Like, like it's, yeah, for me, it's quite hard, but I still need to do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do it. What are your, what do you, what's your thought process when you know you have to do something? Um, yeah. Like when you know there's something that you have to do, like back testing, we'll use that as an example. What's what's the thought process that goes through your head when you don't feel oh, like I think on the at the moment or in the moment. In the like moment that, that split second where all right, I gotta back test, but then you don't feel like doing it. Hmm, I think I will just like put the like the the best what I what I do, but like I didn't do it every time. Like put the timer on one hour or two hours, okay, and just like turn off my phone, and that okay. that's where I was putting in the work. Like that's where I really felt okay. Like it sucks a little bit. Maybe I'll yeah, it'll like be hard and everything, but still need to do it. Still need to stand here and put the work like. Okay, so you have a sample size. That's good. You know that, like, all right, what does it take to be successful at that? Just turn the phone off. Um, but yeah. you're saying it sucks in the beginning? Like, what do you, what do you mean by that? Uh, no, it's more the thing that sucks. It's like that this this process, like, doesn't happen, like, every time I need to do it because mm. it's not, like, 
I don't know, like for me, it should be uh, not not forcing me, but like for gym, like gym, I know after work straight away, not thinking, tired, want to sleep, whatever. I still go, mm -hmm. still do the work. And after that, I can eat and whatever. Like I don't have the choice. And because here, like sometimes, like if it's Sunday or whatever, like I kind of have the choice. Like I, yeah, I'm quite, it's quite hard at that, that point. Yeah. And I think it's it's like a bad circle because I don't have results because I don't do it. And because I don't have results, I don't, don't want to do it. So it's yeah. like a bad circle. And I think it just needs to like get started, like be doing it, get results, even small results. But so I'm like excited to do it and like not excited, but like want to do it. Like uh, I did two hours today. Let's do a third or like whatever. Like tonight I want to do it and. Like, let's learn something and like, yeah. yeah, that's really, I think, where the interest comes in. Like, even more interest. Like, I have the interest, but uh, I really want to, like, be more in it, like, putting more work in it and really uh, not expecting, like, putting in the work and expecting what I should be receiving, but not just not putting the work and expecting some fancy fancy stuff and like being disappointed yeah the the biggest thing right now for you is obviously you're in the beginning stages and what you need to do is learn how to erase and ignore your emotions that's just your brain telling you that you don't feel like doing it but who cares what that side of your brain says you have to ignore that and i know it's hard it's specifically hard in the beginning when you're not seeing results right but yeah. let like kind of switch your mentality where it's like, okay, I want to see results. And I know the only way I'm going to see results is if I do this. And if you truly love yourself, if you truly have these dreams of yours um, to succeed in this business or succeed in these markets, you're going to listen to yourself and you're going to ignore those emotions. You're going to start thinking logically. Like I always tell you in the market, right? Think logically, not emotionally. Remove yeah. those emotional traits. It's the same thing in your life. Remove those emotional decisions that initially you just want to go right to your phone or you want to go right to playing video games or watching tv watching youtube you know it, yeah, it's exactly. it's so easy to make a living today because of all the advances we have in technology and all that stuff but it's very also very hard because we have so many distractions today so what do you have to do all you got to do is eliminate those distractions exactly. i know i know it sounds a lot easier said than done but it can be done. And eventually you're going to start turning that corner where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm completely okay um, with skipping out on this entertainment for right now. And um, I'm going to just put the work in. And trust me, after you do that and you make that decision, you're going to feel so much better about yourself. You're going to, you're going to, that's where you build the confidence. That's where you build the momentum. Momentum is built by those little decisions that you're making every day. Okay. Yeah, because you each time, like the times that I back tested, like when I finished, I was never feeling like bad or, oh, I lost two hours. Or, and so I was really like happy about myself and like, let's keep on going. Like, that's good. I took take took notes and oh yeah, and yeah. And even if it's like hard to repeating it, like at the moment when I when I have done it, like I had good a good feeling, like really, like yeah. And I think after that, as you build work 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 like when things will happen like you will like just feel that you deserve them like you deserve this this win you deserve this you deserve that like it's not you don't feel it you don't see it as luck or your hope or whatever like you see it more i think is yeah i put the hours in so like not don't pay me but like i deserve it yeah i deserve progress in the market monetary or not but like i still deserve something and, and yeah 100 percent, and that's where that confidence comes in where you're like okay i did put the work in and i deserve to to see some profits i deserve to yeah. um um feel good about my trading and, and what i'm doing right now and that that's that's what you want to build just those little decisions um but have you been using or doing that uh, the aars no, no, no. Okay. 
I think that's going to be huge for you to, to start implementing. Um, the mindset foundation part of the course in the beginning, do you remember what I was talking about, AARs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Start implementing those because self-talk and journaling and talking to yourself about those days, writing these things down, your thoughts, your thoughts in the market, your thoughts about working out, your thoughts about, you know, what am I thinking when I first wake up? You know, how's my day going so far? Am I getting the things done that I said I was going to do? Mm-hmm. Doing that every single day, just a quick, you know, note and everything, you're going to start seeing massive progress. Just make sure that you're doing them every day and sticking to it. You hear me? Yeah, hey, bro. Here. I'm just trying to check where, because I think we did it together. Yes. And I'm looking. On the second zoom. Find. Uh yeah, it's really like consistency. And this and this is the same thing, like I did it, but not consistently. So like things don't have value if you do them once and even if you mm. do them like as much as you can, but you don't repeat it, like it's better do every day a little, like back testing and whatever, than too much once and and yeah, you're not ready. Like you're just like, yeah, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. Like, yeah. I think. Yeah. And, I mean, just, and, you just got to start with the little things and it's, it's making sure that you're journaling every single day. That's, that's not too much. Right. And once you start building on that saying like, okay, I can stick to my word with this. I've been doing it for the last week. Right. Writing down, let me go yeah. back on a Friday and, and review the way I was thinking during these sessions way I was thinking during the day. Am I getting the things I want to do done? Am I listening to myself? Am I sticking to my own word? You know, those are very valuable questions that you could be asking yourself at the end of the week. Wow. I just, I just went four for five on on my days when it comes to sticking to my word, um, back testing for at least an hour a day, journaling all my trades and look at my results. You know, not taking yeah. the trades, taking smart, methodical, planned out trades. Exactly. Really so like. You feel good. Right now, you just feel lost. You feel unorganized. You feel yeah. um, not like you're seeing any results. You know, your, your, your dad's opinion is creeping into your head, right? Yeah. All these little things add up. And all trading is is psychology. So you need to keep that psychology pure. You need to keep it intact at all times you need to keep your confidence intact and how you do that yeah yeah. just put the work in if i'm feeling bad i will be like it will not help me in front of the markets like i will be just doing stupid things and instead of trading well Mm -hmm. so it's like all together if you if something bad is happening in life and you like can't manage to do like little things like in trading it will be very hard even harder than what it is yep trading is a lot like life and and it's a lot like playing golf it's all psychology it's all emotion uh but if you can remove that emotion as much as possible you're not going to do it completely but if you do it as much as possible you're going to be much better off right pat what's up Juan? Can you hear me? What's up, yo? There he is. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Great. Alan, awesome, Pat, awesome. meet meet uh, Juan. It's our new member. What's up, Steph? Hi, bro. How you doing? Hey, good, good. Why's your camera on? No camera? <laughs> no cap. <laughs> no camera. Wait a second. Yeah, I'll man. put it on. So you started Monday, right? Yes, sir. He talks. So how... um. How's your uh, session going so far? You just started New York? Yes, sir. Just got on it at 5.30. No, like 5.40 or so. Um, Looking at a, what is it, DJ? Yeah. Broke a resistance. I'm waiting for it to, correction, broke a support. I'm waiting for it to form a resistance on the lower time frame, 5.15, to then continue to move down to about 153, 7.20. 720. Okay. 
Um, let's, yeah, let's um, obviously do a little breakdown right now since uh, some of you guys came in. Um, I just wanted to obviously go over some psychological talk with Alan. Um, but as you guys can see right now, looking at the weekly, um, and I actually, I haven't broken down a chart with, uh, with one yet. So let's do that. So looking at GJ, um, we're looking at the monthly right over here, right? So obviously we're coming down price, creating lower highs, lower lows over here. And right now we're starting to approach 155 and I'll get to that in a sec, but we have this previous resistance up here at 155 on the monthly, very strong level at 155 previous support over here, support resistance, right? Previous support over here. So price likes to react and revisit these levels over here at 155. So not to mention, and, and when it comes to my trading style, I don't think you've gotten through most of the course yet, uh, but you know, we'll, 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 get, we'll get through this. And, and it's kind of similar to Rakios, but I do use some different things in here uh, to add to my analysis. So, oh, Pat said, welcome to you. Um, so my main confluence, the main way I look at the charts is using support and resistance. That's, that's number one by far, supply and demand, right? And then we start to add the, the trend lines in there if they do make sense. We're not going to manufacture any kind of trend lines just to have them on my chart. I, I hate having them on as much as I can, uh, but the ones that make sense, I keep them on there. So not only the previous resistance up here at 155, previous support on the higher time frames, but we're starting to meet up with this bearish trend that we've been in since 2007. Right, so this is a pretty significant trend over here. So now we're approaching it. This current monthly candle has no bottom wick and it just pushed up. So that means we have a lot of momentum in this candle past the high of this previous candle up here. And we're just pushing up to at least tap into 155. Looking at the weekly, it gets a little bit more messy over here, but 155 is that median number, if you will. Um, so looking here at the weekly, if you look at GJ on the lower time frames, I'll point it out. But every time we make a high, we come down, create a support, consolidate a little bit, and then we come up and retest that high. Or we just come down, create a support, and then retest that high right away. You'll see it on the daily, the four hours specifically. Uh, but right over here, we've been bullish for like 13, 14 weeks, just pushing bullish on GJ on the weekly. Every single week, we've just been bullish. Uh, we finally created this high up here. And this kind of make that I mean, it does make sense, but this channel, the main thing is this was the crash from COVID, right? We failed to break the lows of the lows that we created during uh, Brexit. This was Brexit back in 2016. Price just came all the way down, created lows, but it never broke the lows that it created during the 2008 financial crisis right over here, right? So for some reason, it's a little odd to me, the fact that COVID, one of the worst economic hits that we've taken, at least in the short term, never broke the low of COVID over here, or not COVID, but Brexit, it never broke the low. So that kind of makes sense. It doesn't make sense to me for the fact that we just kind of snap back and form that support. So now we've just been bullish and we've been sticking in this channel ever since and the only reason we have this channel here is because we reacted to this area right over here. Previous candle body closes up here to the left, right? Right before 150, 155, we got 153 right up here. So we reached that level and we finally found a resistance on the weekly candles, on the weekly time frame. So now we came down and formed this new support, which brought us up. And this is what we've been looking for. This is what we were looking for all throughout here. We're like, okay, when are we getting this higher time frame rejection, new support formed and price coming up? That nice correction over there. So now we finally got it. And when this candle closed bullish, barely a bottom wick, never passed the low of this wick right here, this rejection, previous candle wick rejections, this candle closed a strong bullish candle with a top wick to fill. The next two weekly candles, didn't even have a bottom wick over here. Let me just check gold. Okay, gold is fine. Um, never created a bottom wick and just pushed up and filled the wicks. So now we had a clean close above these candle body highs over here. 
and now this candle made a top wick and failed to pass the high of the previous wick over here, and now we're pushing down. Um, I don't want to call this a bearish big belt, but right now it opened up a couple pips above that level. And whenever you have that on the higher time frames, it's only like six pips. Uh, but whenever you have like 20, 25 pips, it opens up above the previous close. That means price is normally going to start heading down, at least for a, a certain amount of time. If it's in a bullish trend, maybe not as much. But um, we've seen this time and time again where price creates a bullish big belt on the lower time frame, the daily, the four hour, and price just starts pushing up from that area. So looking at the daily now, the daily is kind of consolidating in this range. Tiger, what's up, buddy? From 154.300 to 153.500. So we're just kind of in this range right now. It looked like we were coming up where we created the support over here and just started pushing up, passing the high of this wick right here, barely, but it did. But then it just rejected this previous wick rejection area. So looking at the four hour now, we're just stuck in this range. It's, it's very difficult to trade a range like this. You want to lower your risk in ranges like this, right? You want to have a plan that you go into your trade with, and if it works, it works, but you're lowering your, your risk in a consolidation area where you have no trend. Yes, it's a bullish trend, but at the same time, we're pushing bearish, and we printed a lower high than we did over here. So that, that'll be, that's a little interesting right now. Let's keep checking on gold. Um, now, looking over here on the one hour, what I did was I put my support right over here, Previous candle body closes, but we had all these wick rejections. And looking at the 30 minute, it's just a safer place. Plus, you got this support right here. I'd rather wait instead of like putting your your zone right there or right there. You could get wicked out at any time. But it looks like we did close fairly, you know, strongly below that area right over there. But what I like to do is I, I like to have it right here. Previous support. You got this wick coming in here, snap back, ended up closing above this area. But right now, I want price to close below this area on the 30-minute. It may be a retest, and price continues down. I don't think I'm going to take this, but um, depending on when we get some volume, maybe around 8 o'clock, if you get this resistance forming over here, you could possibly take this. But just be aware, we are ranging in here. This is an order block over here, order blocks. It's a little difficult to trade in this. So you, you may want to wait for price to break and close below this area to take these moves, these easy moves to come right back down to this key area. As we were saying, this is our bullish trend that we've been respecting uh, since April 23rd, since forming the support. So are we coming right back down? We retested it right over here, right? Key area, key area, and now maybe we consolidate, retap this area, maybe we drop down here, maybe we continue to consolidate, retap it right here, and then we continue up. But I do think that we, at some point, are going to tap 155, especially if we get some more positive sentiment coming out of London when it comes to the lockdowns. Now, right now, Boris Johnson is kind of, I think the reason why we're consolidating over here and we're pushing bearish is because Boris Johnson is saying that uh, with this Indian variant coming in, they may need to slow down the um, slow down the lockdown leisure, where they're they're letting people you know kind of come out, go back to work, stuff like that. Where if this Indian variant starts to scare them a little bit more, he may have to um, lengthen. The, or extend the uh, the lockdown, which wouldn't be good for anything. So I think that that, that fear kind of is, is creeping in a little bit, but we are still bullish, uh, but we are consolidating over here, trying to figure out where we want to do. Maybe we're accumulating orders uh, to continue up, but nevertheless, um, we are currently bearish uh, to start the week. That makes sense? Awesome. Got it. Hey, uh, Tiger, this is Juan. This is a new member of ours. He's from Texas. He's a police officer. 
Um, just join the team. Couldn't be happier to have him, right? Hey, nice to meet you, guys. Thank you, thank you. There he is. He's got his camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's up, buddy? So, right now, I am in gold. And the reason I'm in gold, and I'm very bullish on gold. Don't get me wrong. Um, obviously, after staying in this channel over here, just pushing up, all these candles, extremely bullish over here. It's kind of annoying to, to look at this, but if we just do this, looking at gold over here, we have the support. This is a beautiful setup. This is what you look for every time, right? Uh, previous resistance over here, previous support, right? Price is kind of pushing up. This candle is very bullish over here. But when I came to the charts this morning, what I saw was a very bearish four-hour candle over here. The fact that, all right, we are in this bullish range. And what did I say last week? That after forming this high up here, right, kind of consolidating in here, but also forming this high and also reacting to the resistance of the channel up here on gold, um, we we're going to come down to form some kind of a support. Uh, I would say anywhere I was looking for anywhere in here. Right. Once we come down here, I thought maybe we would come down to this area right around here, maybe consolidate, uh, retap this bullish trend, right. As, as we're respecting it and then come up to retest these highs. But it looks like we created the support over here. Nice, strong bullish candle right here. This candle exited the area. You have this order block, I would say. So once price exited that area after consolidating with a strong bullish close, we came up, created a high, came down, retested that order block to the left, and we just started pushing up. So now we're kind of in this channel. It looks better on the one hour, the, the 30 minute, right? Where we're just respecting this area over here. Now, when I came to the charts, the four hour, was very bearish with a wick to fill with no top wick over here. So we're just pushing bearish. Um, looking at the one hour, now this is technically calling tops. And my only rule is when it comes to calling tops is that you want to make sure that we break and close below the previous uh, support over here. Mainly you want to wait for it to retest. Uh, but right over here, the reason I took this is because we created this top wick on the 30 minute right? This top wick created on the first half of the 30 minute. And then the second half around 615, we ended up flipping bearish and staying below this previous support, right? So it looked like we were going to come right back into the range and then we closed right below. So looking at the 15 minute, 15 minute, I don't know about you, but that's a perfect break and retest. Very bearish on the four hour price comes up, creates a resistance, nice, strong bearish close over here on the 15 minute. And this is where I took this. Um, and what I was doing was I at least think that we're going to fill these wicks right down here, which it looks like we're about to. And that's where I'm going to secure. But I think may maybe we could, or well, I'm going to secure, move my stops to break even. If I get stopped out, so what? But I want price to continue down with a clean move to the left over here. If we do break the support uh, and fill these wicks, I want price to continue down at some point and this will be my take profit, 62 pips down here. Um, but if it doesn't happen, if it stops me out of break even, that's fine. But I, I anticipate either price holding support right here and continuing up, or, you know, we just reach 1854. It's a very strong level. Um, so maybe we're going to correct this a little bit, especially being at the resistance over here, previous higher time frame resistance, and then previous resistance of the bullish channel. So maybe we're correcting a little bit retesting this level since we didn't over here we never retested over here we just kind of pushed up where is that level I'm trying to see yeah we just kind of pushed up over here and this move right here was on friday from the retail sales so retail sales came out negative or not as good as maybe we maybe thought. I knew it was going to be bad, but um, it just gradually pushed up. I grabbed part of this move last week to end the week. 
but um i think at some point we've just been pushing up on the higher side of this channel over here maybe we need to revisit this area down here the only thing is we got to check out check out 10-year treasury yields so 10-year treasury yields is a complete inverse of gold uh most of the time and the fact that this is been pushing bearish over here after retapping 175 uh we are pushing bearish so gold should be bullish gold is bullish on the higher time frames uh but right now in the shorter shorter span right now technically we are pushing bearish so the technical analysis is basically what led me to this thinking especially looking at the 30 minute over here Closing below this area, rejecting with the 30 minute, this candle creating a top wick, passing the low of this candle right here. I had a feeling that this is the candle that was going to fill this wick, but maybe it'll be this candle um, and we shall see. But I only risk 1% on this because I was calling taps, technically. So you risk a small amount on that, thinking it's going to play out. You just execute, even if it's a small risk, but uh, make sure that you are um executing and and uh capitalizing on some of these setups that you see that makes sense so that's what we're looking at um ej is pretty similar to gj right now i like this setup over here on uh the four hour of gj on uh, of ej we created this top wick and this candle ended up coming all the way down what was this last night uh, five o'clock, the market opened like this, but closed the doji candle. We retested this previous support, and now we're holding support right here. So looking at the one hour, we have this support. All right. We broke the previous resistance up here. So we have this resistance right here. We created a high coming down and retest this previous support, maybe form a support right here, and then continue right back up to retest the highs. We have about 25 pips right there to um, to retest those highs. We'll just start to uh, reject a little bit. Maybe holding support. I'm going to move my stop loss to break even on gold since we did reach a certain uh, pip count. And just go risk free. If it stops me out, it does. It's all good. But it shouldn't be passing the high of this candle because that means we formed the support right here. And that means we're starting to head up. And we're respecting this whole zone right here. If that is the case. Does this setup make sense to you guys? Like what I'm doing? Yes, sir. Cool. I wish this happened. When did you? Was it? When did you take the trade? Like a couple of minutes before the session, yeah. Six fifteen. Six. Right now, more like six seven. Uh, six sixteen. But which is where you'll put in your your journal, right? You put the exact time that you yeah. enter that trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The exact time that you get the volume pushes. That way, you know. And, and really study your pair and understand the way it moves. You know that, you know, GJ, it's going to move at 8.13, 8.15, around that time. It's going to move at 8.25. It'll move at yeah. 7.54. You know, you, you really get to know your pair and, and you get more and more comfortable with it. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Secure. Woo! See ya. There you go. What's up, James? Hey, how are you? Good, man. Just did a whole breakdown on everything, but... Um, That's a nice sell. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was liking it on the 30-minute <clears throat> with this support that was formed, and you know me with calling tops. I got to wait for that nearest support to break and close below <clears throat> and retest. And this is kind of a retest right here, but I liked what the 15-minute was looking like. Uh, right over here with this bearish close of the wick to fill. Um, yeah. So, and and Alan, what I was just saying with the volume pushes and journaling, 
Um, you see how we just got that volume push at 725? Actually, it's a different time for you, obviously, but um, 725 Eastern Standard Time, we just got a strong push. So you want to record that in your journal. Exactly. You want to be able to go to your journal right in here in the description section, or, you know, obviously you take a, a screenshot of this and then you write it next to the screenshot. James, this is uh, Juan, by the way. Juan from uh, Texas. James, hey, this is our uh, our Irishman. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Thanks. James, you taking anything there in London? I was in GU. Okay. But then it was up like 20 people, I think, and I was coming back to my entry, so I was just hovering around there. Okay, cool. It's... It, 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 wait, it pushed how many pips? I think it was like 20. Okay. I need to check it again, but I didn't secure because I took the small lot. I wanted to see how it play out. Mm. And I was just playing around in my entry, so. Yeah. I might just close it or break even. That makes sense. Now, from, from my um, experience, I think the best thing is not worrying about like, all right, I put a small lot, so I'm not going to secure that in the past for me has created bad habits, you know, yeah. where, you know, you, you, you don't secure and it comes back to your entry like it is right now. And you just spent how much time, like since London, um, kind of emotionally invested into this trade for, you know, it may, it may just, you know, either stop you out or you stop yourself out at break even, or you just close 50 at break even, which is probably what I would do. But um, yeah. this is what we were talking about last week with the, the securing, even though you're swinging, um, just secure like a little percentage. Like it could even be 25%, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. You know, just, just to get something. Like yeah, exactly. And, and don't, don't worry about the fact that it was a small lot, whatever you're not used to. Um, just you want to make sure that you secure when you're at least like 20, 25 pips in. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Like, Friday, when I was trading, I just put my TP, and I didn't know what it was. You know, I didn't look how many pips it was. I just said it. I then went away and did other things, and uh, it was actually a lot easier. Because then if they hit it, then it was grand. But, like, one of them was only 20 pips. The other one was, like, 35 pips. Okay. And, like, I didn't even think about how many pips it was. I just let it hit it. And it was actually more, more of a relaxed feeling than watching it constantly. There you go. Good shit, man. <clears throat> yeah, you've been killing it. I think the, the main thing for you is just like learning where to secure, and that's it. Yeah, and I feel that, patient. That should be easy. Yeah. I get that? impatient. Patience. Patience. You know, like I get impatient a lot of the times, you know, I like jump into things. But do you think it's because of FOMO? Yeah, I think I have a small bit of that. I thought I got rid of it, but like I don't think you ever get rid of it. I think you, there's always going to be that small bit of it there. Yeah, no, 100%. It's it's going to dwindle down over time once you get more, uh, um, I don't know, more disciplined, more more controlled. Uh, but understanding that you don't always have to be in a trade. And I get guilty of this too. I say it all the time when, you know, we're trading live here, I feel like I should be in a trade with you guys. And that's just not the case. I shouldn't be changing my psychology just because I'm trading live in front of people. It should be the same exact thing. And, you know, it, it's, it's natural. You, you feel like, all right, we're live streaming. There should be a, a, an opportunity for us. But if there's not that day, then there's not. You yeah. know, and, and you guys should be able to take that into your personal trading too. You see the setup or you see your, your pair. Okay, maybe I don't have the setup that I like. Like GJ, is it really, I mean, obviously we're consolidating over here, but do I really want to trade in this? Right? Mm -hmm. Do I need to? It's a Monday. Price at some point this week is probably going to break out of this. So, yeah, we're waking up early. We're, we're, we're doing our analysis and all that stuff. And we feel like if we don't take a trade, we're not, um, we're not trading. When in reality, you really are. When you're doing your analysis and everything, you're getting better and better and better every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just showing up. We got to embrace that. And, and if you need your fix, most of you guys have soft FDX. If you need your fix of entering a trade, you take that and you move move on with the uh, soft FTX and, and get your fix that way. That's what I used to do. And I used to trade with Raquel 
uh, and you know, I wasn't doing this and, and trading live in front of people, I would either be looking at fundamentals. I'd be um, obviously taking notes of, of what he was saying. I would uh, just be analyzing different charts and everything. But if I didn't get my setup, I would go right over to the simulator while he's talking and I would just get a session in as well. And then I would do it after the session also just to yeah. you know, get my back testing in. And, and hey, that, that eliminated FOMO for me at the time. Uh, hey, Steph, that's great. Hey, so what, what do you use to back test? Is it trading view or do you use something else? It's called uh, soft effects right here. Soft effects. Yep. Hey, do you, do you have it? Have you heard of it? Mm, no. Okay. I've heard of it, but I don't have it. So this here, I'll exit this. Um, this is a simulator where um, you can download data. So you can go over here to the data center, uh, Duke mm -hmm. It's just like who, who, um, uh, I don't know the word for it, um, supplies the data of the charts, right? And you download this, all your pairs could be here, um, and then you can update it. So I have GJ all the way up to Friday, mm -hmm. right? So what you could do over here is start a new simulation. You're going to do instrument. It's going to be GJ. These are the only mm -hmm. three I have downloaded. And you can do whatever um, uh, date that you want. Now, I wouldn't go past 2019 uh, with GJ. Now, it, it's funny because in the beginning, what I did was I deleted all the data. But um, you can back test all the way back to 2003. And with me, my, my mindset in the beginning is like, I want to know everything about this pair. I want to back test every possible trade I could possibly back test. And that just doesn't make sense. Like, why would you go back to 2003 to back test anything like that? So that's right. why we, we, we came into this. Let me just check my, uh, let me just check uh, real quick. What's up, Giovanni? There we go. Good morning. How you doing, brother? Hi, bro. Good, good. How was your weekend? It was amazing. How about yours? Good. Chill. Just stayed home. Nothing crazy. Good shit. Giovanni, this is uh, Juan. Juan from Texas. He's a new uh, member in here. Hey, nice to meet you, Juan. Yeah. Nice to meet you too, my man. Um, gold. gold is going. Gold is going. What was that? Gold is going. Yeah, man. A little bit. I already secured, so I don't have much on the line. I only risk 1% on that because of the fact that you know, we are bullish. You know, I am calling tops. My rules, and, and you'll see this in the course, is when I'm calling tops over here, a lot of people love to call tops. Like, oh, my God, we reached a higher time frame resistance. I think price is coming down, and you, you end up taking it somewhere up here, which is good. But at the same time, you have a much lower probability because what I look for is I look for that resistance to form, and then I look for a support to form so that we can retest that high. So if I think this is a top, I think price is at the, the, its tops right now, I'm going to wait for the nearest support over here to break, close, and retest below. And this candle was kind of a retest over here, uh, but I like the price structure on the 15-minute, and that's why I took it. I just lowered my risk because we did have this support here. I thought at some point we could um, fill this wick right here and then maybe f form support and then continue up. I have my take profit down here because we have a nice clean move down here and we're due, like I broke down before, we're due to probably retest this, uh, the support of this bullish trend over here to then continue up and retest those highs just like GJ does and just like gold does as well. Just mm -hmm. like right over here, right? Created this high up here. We come down, broke some nearest support over here, but then we wanted to retest this bullish trend and then we started to come up. Trades like this, you wish you would risk a little bit more now. Mm -hmm. Right. But <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. It's, it's Monday. I mean, we're going to have plenty of setups like this. Got to keep the emotions out. Be completely fine with every single decision that you make. But, Alan, did that uh, talk help before? What was that? I, I was saying to Alan. Alan, did that talk help before? Did they what? Sorry, I didn't understand. That talk that we had before. Did that help? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. Good shit. Yeah, that's um 
Start just just start with this week, this week of the yeah. AM course. Just writing down everything, um, making sure that you're keeping track of everything that you're thinking, uh, everything that you're doing, and it's gonna raise some alarms. It's like, okay, why was I thinking that way? And then when you start to build that momentum, it's like, what the fuck was I doing? You yeah. know, like like why was I wasting my time doing that, or why was I even wasting my time thinking that way? You know. Exactly. And then all of a sudden you start to lose momentum and you forget about the way you were thinking when you were really, you know, at the height of your momentum. Uh, and that's where you got to control it. You got to make sure that you're um, staying and keeping that momentum every single day and getting the most out of yourself. So start implementing that. Let's check in with you at the end of the week. We'll see yeah. where you're at and uh, we'll go over those ARs. and Day by day. Yeah, yeah we'll see how you're feeling at More the end steps. of the week. So let's see what we're looking like on the 15. Nice, clean close below the support over here. Uh, but it looks like we came right back down to this wick and we're starting to flip bullish. Are we going to hold support right here? Let's use our... I like that lower high pattern on the 15. It's normally something I would take every time. Right here? Yeah, it's just like that lower high that it creates, and then you would take like oh, yeah. the, the second or third bearish candle down. Oh, yeah. And then looking at the four hour, like look at the four hour. This is what the four hour looked like. So what I'm looking at is obviously, yeah, I'm looking for some kind of a support to form because we are bullish on gold. Fundamentally and technically, I'm very bullish on gold. But when you see a candle like this starting to form at five o'clock, all right, that's a strong four hour candle. I'm waiting for some kind of a resistance to form to take this down to at least fill these wicks down here. Now, looking at the, the 30 minute, I drew this black line right here because it's the nearest support. The second half of the 15 minute candle, because the first half came up and created this wick, I was waiting for price to close. It started creeping down, ended up flipping bearish and closing below that support, which gave me the confidence that, you know, this is what the 15 minute was looking like. Gave me the confidence that, we're going to probably start pushing bearish. I put my, I have my stop loss above this wick right here, this liquidity wick. And then price just started falling. Um, price dropped, filled this wick. I secured 80% at 14.6 pips. Actually, I think I secured 90 because I changed the um, parameters on my magic keys. So I think that's what I, I think it was 90. So let me, uh, 90% at 14.6 pips. On gold, I like to secure more um, when I first secure because gold can snap right back and take you out. It's, uh, it's a little bit more ruthless than GJ, even though GJ is pretty, pretty hectic. GJ, th there's nothing over here. We're, we're in this range. We are bullish. I'm going to see if this lines up right here. Looks very messy. Very messy. Looks like we're respecting this minor bullish trend over here. And if you zoom out, just keep tapping into this area, forming a support, coming up, creating a high, new high, higher low, coming up, creating a higher high, higher low. So is this our support? We're going to get like a little fake out of this support over here and then continue right back up to retest this. I think we may consolidate over here and then come up and retest these highs. So we'll see. With gold, we could probably retest 1842 for 100. That'd be interesting. Because that was a strong zone uh, last week. The whole week it was just consolidating. 1842 right over here. Yeah, right there. Okay. Yeah, I have my TP right that. here. They'll probably retest that on the higher time frame and then continue going up. 100%. Yeah, I, I see this this candle right here, which I like a lot. This nice, clean, bullish candle that we can mirror. I have the zone right here, but that's because of the lower time frames, previous resistance over here. But I had a feeling that we were at least going to fill these wicks and then potentially break through and fill this candle over here and retest these lows, form support somewhere down here. Uh, I have my TP a little bit higher around like 1844 uh, and then form support and then continue right back up. 
Let's take a look at our indices. Treasury yields are on their way down, which means gold should be on its way up. But um, we shall see. VIX is was very volatile on the beginning of last week, and this was this was the crash. Um, I don't know if you know what this is, Juan, but volatility index. So whenever you know there's panic or greed or anything going on in the market, this is going to be bullish. Normally, it's consolidating. It's just like kind of like waiting for, for shit to hit the fan. Then all of a sudden, it spikes up. And this is when US 30 kind of took its dip right over here. In the beginning of last week, got inflation fears. Got a lot of going on right now in the world. Uh, geopolitical issues with, with Israel and Palestine. Uh, there's a lot going on. Um, India with the, with the COVID spike. So we, we had this last week, but now we're kind of uh, consolidating again. UK 100 is on its way up, respecting this bullish trend over here. But now we created a lower high right here. So are we going to form support to continue up? Or are we going to push through this and push through 68.59 to continue down? And if that's the case, that then you're going to start seeing GJ continue bearish. One, the UK 100 is basically like US 30 or, you know, mm. it, but for the UK stock market, 100 top companies in the uh, UK. Then finally, we have our US currency index, another inverse of gold. Right now, it is bearish. Been respecting this bearish trend for uh, since the beginning of Q2, just pushing bearish, respecting these areas. These are very key areas, create a new low. Looks like we form support uh, just so that we could come up and retest these highs, create a, a lower high, and then we just crash. Same thing over here, did the same thing. So it pretty much does the opposite of gold. What was that? Does it, is that the opposite of gold? In a Most way? of the time, yeah. U.S. currency index is uh, the dollar index. The gold and the U.S. are basically inverse. So whenever we're doing very well, since we're the reserve currency of the world, normally gold is, is, is on its way down. People are taking money out of gold and putting it into the U.S. dollar. And then vice versa. When everything is, you know, kind of hitting the fan, you want to see... Um, let's see over here. This was the height of... Basically, it was basically the high that we created, but this is that push from right over here. This is March 23rd. This is when people started investing in the gold, knowing that, okay, the, the, the market's starting to crash. We went down to, what, 19,000 on the mm -hmm. Dow, uh, and we were just on our way up. And then we've been in this corrective phase where, okay, um, things are starting to calm down now. Uh, summer's coming around. The virus is less susceptible uh, during summer months. Uh, economy's starting to open up a little bit more. And then we had that second wave in the fall, which maybe created some of these uh, new highs being created, lower highs. And then we just kind of continued to crash when we started to get vaccines coming in right over here. And then once we retested 1680, which is that previous support that we had, we created a double bottom over here. And we've just been pushing up since. I'm still kicking myself for not getting in over here. <laughs> but whatever. So gold. Gold could very well. And, and looking at the, the four hours well, this helps you. This is that previous resistance that we've been looking at to come up and retest, which we did. We came up, filled these wicks. Uh, but then we started to push through. So now we created a new high up here. Are we coming down to retest these previous resistance, or this previous resistance to then form support and continue up? Sure looks like it on the four hour. So that's that's basically what I'm waiting for. And then, are you guys buying the dip on Bitcoin? Um, probably. <laughs> probably. Pure Ethereum. Pure Ethereum. Ethereum? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's smart. That was a big drop on Ethereum, man. Yeah. Uh, let's let's check out some. Uh, let me see if I can. Anyone see um, the guy that runs Innovation Market Story? 
No. Uh, Ted was talking about it. He believes that uh, Bitcoin will drop down to like 10 grand. Who said that? Toriak? Uh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, the guy that Ted kid? was talking about. It. Yeah. He thinks it's going down to 10 grand? Yeah, that's what he thought. I was reading a story and that's what he thinks eventually like. Because wow. it needs to, he thinks that it needs to get out all the, let's say, people who bought into the hype it needs to correct that to go back up again. Mm. Which kind of makes sense. one hell it. of a thing to happen. Imagine like the amount of thousands <laughs> or hundreds of thousands lost when that happened. If it does ever happen, but like. Oh, it'd be more than that. that. Millions. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, billions. Billions, yeah. <laughs> billions of people or billions of dollars have been poured into this thing. And I, I do, I am bullish on it. I, I'm more, I'm more, you guys know me, I'm more of a gold guy. Uh, when it comes to shit hitting the fan, investing gold, it's a tangible product. Bitcoin is kind of like a fool's gold. But um, I do think that, yeah, you know, it is the way of the future. I'm not going to be ignorant to that. I am yeah. going to invest into it. Especially when uh, we're going towards a cash-free society, you know. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Let's um, let's open up a chart layout. Ah, oh, what the hell? So, have y'all noticed that GJ, well, in my time zone, um, Central? At around 6.30, it likes to do fake outs. Like, it'll break uh, resistance support, and then it'll go pop back in the uh, opposite direction. Yeah, I don't know if y'all noticed that. Yeah, 6.30 over here. I think your time frame is 5.30. When I'm uh, right now, it's 7.47. Oh, no, so... so. I'm ahead. You're in Texas. I'm in Jersey. So, we're, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. we're ahead by, like, so 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's... um. That's pretty interesting. So you're saying you you see normally see a fake out like this right over here, and then price continues bullish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times. Yeah, you definitely get um, some changes in price action um, during those high volatile times. Six thirty, you know, um, six fifty seven, um, you know, seven fifty three, seven fifty four. Uh, just right before the New York Open, uh, 8.15, uh, like towards 9 o'clock, right, right around 8.50 something. Uh, that, that's why it's so important to know your pair and, and know when it moves, and when you're going to get that volume push, especially as traders like us. I, I know you trade similarly to Raquel and, and myself, so um, we're looking for that volume push. So right now, are we getting a support formed over here to continue up? I'm just going to... I'm sorry, I'm sorry go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I was just saying I'm, I'm going to leave mine. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm risk-free right now. So if it drops, it drops. Hits me a break-even. Hits me a break-even. That's fine. Um, but are we forming this support over here, previous resistance uh, right here? Or are we just retesting this area right here to then continue down and fill these wicks? Which I, 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 I'm that's like my main bias right now. I'm sorry, Juan, what were you saying? Do you use uh, fibs? Um, every once in a while, um, you know, Giovanni's actually been uh really introducing that in here, and I'm always open to learning new things and stuff. And I, I used to use them when I first learned how to trade swing trading, um, but then I kind of just Got away from them. I it wasn't I wasn't a swing trader. I was more of a uh, moved on to price action. I was introduced to Rock Um mm-hmm. and that's kind of where I went with that. And you know, in my head for that two years, I'm hearing you don't need indicators and all that stuff, and and it was proven that you don't. Um, but they do help. You know, I'm not over here using like elasticator bands or whatever you want to call them. Oh. <laughs> um, but fibs make sense. Because what I'm seeing is on gold. 61.8? Yeah. yeah I and if we get a good 30 to one hour, 30 minute, one hour bullish close to enter and take off. Yep. But I'm not too, too confident on those. I use them as a little tool, but I'm not, I don't go based off of that. I go back to what Raquel does. 
Cool. We had that 30, 15 minute to form support, support and then break. Yeah, basic support and resistance. Let that be your uh, your main confluence. And then if you want to add some things and, and if this helps you with your analysis, then then go ahead. Yeah, I might take gold cells now on the pass of the high uh, the low the fifteen minute cap. Nice. All the way to eighteen forty three four seven hundred. Now did you Javine, do you draw your fib from right here to right here? Or no? No, I'm not drawing fib yet. Okay. Because that's thirty eight point yeah. Wait a minute, I draw my fibs on the higher time frame so I can catch the the 200 pip move, 100 oh. pip move. But you could draw it on the lower time frame too. Yeah, of course. Um, you're saying you think it's coming down here because of the fit? Do you use the fit from down here? No, it's just a candle frame? to the left. Six candle. On what time frame? No, clean candle on the left on the 15. Oh, oh yeah, right here, 100. Yeah. percent I'm telling you, it's gonna re it's gonna retest that that level. Yeah, it should. Be a nice highlight. All right, it's about to pass the low of that wick. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm into after that. You have a nice 40 pips. Trying to do something. And then I'm going to keep this open and I'm just going to journal. While we watch this, that way Juan can see the way I journal. GJ. Juan, do you use uh, Trello yet? No, I don't even know how to do it. I was looking through yours and I was like, okay, so how do you go through this? I think you have to independently click on each image, right? Uh, I'm, what was that question? So whenever you, when I was looking through your journal, I had to independently click through every single one of them that you had. Every so single like picture? little slide, yeah. Well, you could always do this. Um, use your arrows. Oh, okay. So that'll help you. Um, but do you like the organization of it? Yeah. Okay, cool. And can you see yourself using this? Yes. I highly, highly recommend using this. But um, yeah, what you do, all you do is come over here. You're, you're in your, your, um, your chart. Wow, gold's just pushing. Go, oh, baby. Um, and right over here, you see this camera feature? Right. Take a screenshot. You go save image, and then it opens a new tab. Right click, right. copy image. Come over to your journal. Oh, right over here. Just type into the description section and paste it. Right? And it just appears there. So... <laughs> First, you want to take a look at um, some of my journals and, and look at the, um, the titles. Use these as a template. So the titles, obviously, you're going short on this position. So it's short XU, gold. Um, and once the trade is over, I hate, like, jinxing myself. I'm a little superstitious. So I don't want to say, like, how many pips I already got just in case I get more. Mm -hmm. um, so plus, let's say, 50 pip gain right mm -hmm. on the date at the exact time day session mm -hmm. and it, it'll start and you can make these different but this is the detail that i like to put into the journal to make sure that i can go back back in april and go look at some of the trades i took in the beginning of april and remember where i was and why i took it um so mm -hmm. i'm gonna erase this um, so then you go into the screenshots and what I do is I like to take screenshots of all the time frames. So this is the four hour. So all I do is write four hour. This is the one hour, one hour. This is the 30 minute. And then this is the 15 minute entry. I write entry cause that's the, the time frame I took the entry on. Pulse. Entry right over here, it's the five minute. Five minute ended up closing 50. 
Boost fifty percent as price passed by. This is the thirty minute again. Fifteen minutes secured, ninety percent. Ninety percent at fourteen point. Six pips. Two point six pips. Stop loss and break even. All right, so then what I like to do is I, I have all these screenshots here and I like to wait until go to self Um I like to wait until later on to write the description and that way it's kind of like reading a book and then going back and, and writing notes about that chapter. Um, so it's like, okay, I was in this trade, all that stuff. This gives me a chance to re-review the trade go look at the trade again, and then I write a whole description. Kind of like, you know, what I did right over here, right? Mm -hmm. Every single step that I took, what I was thinking with, with tab number one, the first entry, second entry, third entry, and then where I would have secured, all that stuff. Got it. Yeah, I was looking through that. Yeah. So that's going to be something good that we could go over during uh, your second Zoom. When we're going over your trading plan, we can look at some of the trades you take this week and uh, and see what we can uh, work on. I'll tell you what, though, trading is hard. Oh, yeah. It's the hardest market in the world. <laughs> Got to embrace it, though, right? Yep. I love it. If it was like if it was easy, I know it's cliche, but everyone would be doing it. Like like it feels good telling people I'm a trader, you know, and yeah. um, know, knowing that most people know how hard it is, they're like, oh wow, or they think you're a gambler and you're just like a degenerate. But mm -hmm. you know the way you come off and the way you speak and everything, they know you're not just like like that. I started using, uh, I started trading stocks, supposedly. Um, that's the first course that I bought. And um, it, it showed you how to trade stocks using uh, Ichimoku. I don't know if y'all heard of that. Ichimoku? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What, what the is cloud. that? It's, it's like a little cloud and it's like support resistance. But I... It's hard, man. I don't know how you like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Who'd you learn from? Uh, Tyler Trades. Who? Tyler Trades. Okay. Yeah. And then after that, I was like, man, no, uh, this is just high time frame stuff, man. I need to get into some smaller time frame. So then that's when I joined IM, IML. Yep. And then I was in IML for like a year, year and a half. First it was good. And then they would they would use a lot of the uh, Wyckoff, Wyckoff method. Yep. Which I saw, it was pretty confusing. because so I was like, okay, how do you determine this? Do you determine this in the five minute, 15 minute, one hour? How do you do this? Mm. Um, and then I got away from that, and then that's when I came across with you. And I was like, oh, this is better. You just yeah. come in in the morning, you live for your 10 pits, you dip, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard. 100%. Um, yeah, we have uh, Jaden in here. Jaden trades uh, wake off, wake off. I don't know. My part of, you know, a, a section of my family, their last name is Wyckoff. So it's, mm. um, uh, you I that? actually say that. What's up? I said, would you look at that? Yeah, right. I should probably be using it, right? But Pat laughing at us, degenerate. <laughs> Yo, does um I think Tiger, Tiger, have we hopped on our second zoom yet? No, I don't think so. Okay, have you gone through the whole course? Um at the end of this month it should be 
Okay. Um, and then I have to kind of like renew. I was thinking about switching just to the annual. Okay. Yeah. Whenever, um, whenever you want to hop on, it goes gold. Giovanni, you in yet? Oh, I've been in. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, Tiger, whenever you want to uh, hop on, just let me know. Yeah, probably by the end of this week. Looking forward to it. Oh, shit. Have we said hi to Gio? What's up, Gio? Let me see you crept in. What's up, Gio? What's up, guys? Got the Cali boys. What's everybody doing? Got a couple more Cali boys, but maybe they're sleeping. I haven't seen uh, Rory for a while. What was that? I haven't seen Rory for a while. Yeah, Rory is – um. so Rory was one of uh, a, a buddy of mine that I brought in um, just because, like, I, I've been trying to help him and uh, just get on the right track and, and everything, and I, I thought this would be really good for him, which it is. Um, but I don't know if he has the right mentality for trading. Uh, where, you know, he gets very discouraged from losses. He's already in real estate right now. And to be honest with you, if you think real estate's working for you, you should really only just stick with one thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And and that's um, that's the unfortunate part about it. But I don't know if real estate's really working for him. He's, he's always been back and forth and stuff like that. So it's it's been tough. I'm just kind of giving him a space. Um, but he's just one of my buddies that I thought this would be great for. He loves it. But uh, he's got two kids going through a divorce. It's it's a little difficult. So I, I see where he's coming from. It's tough, man. Yeah, let's um, where's US thirty today? My drawings from yesterday. An artist. So what we were saying yesterday with the US 30 was that this is going to be interesting if, because we're, we're still respecting this bullish trend that we've been in, right? US 30 has just been pushing up, retesting this area multiple times. Here we go. Clockwork. So yesterday we broke a higher time frame support over here on the four four hour, and that was kind of alarming. Uh, but we were just coming down to grab liquidity to continue right back up. But are we forming support uh, resistance over here on the four hour to continue right back down? But I'm not going to be concerned until we break. Um, 33,360, yeah, right around there. Right now, we could be just forming resistance to create a higher low and then continue right back up. But this will be interesting. Probably a good sell opportunity on the four hour. One hour is kind of consolidating. GJ kind of looks like it might be a little choppy this week. Yeah, we got to break out of this. We tapped one fifty four three hundred. Let's see where. Yeah, next next place we're going is uh, uh, one fifty five. I do like on the lower time frames and obviously thirty minute as well. We're respecting this bullish structure even though we are consolidating over here. Um, at least so far, we'll see what we do over here. But we could be forming support over here and then continuing right back up. But got this mess that you don't want to trade with. 
So you're going to have safer buys once we break uh, 154, 100. Then you got about 18 pips in this zone that you could take a buy in. But obviously, safer buys are going to be above 154, 300. But you may be able to start that swing from breaking this resistance right here. Yeah. EJ never respected the support. Sorry, what was that, Tiger? Oh, I was just going to say that like, I started paying a little bit more close attention to like GU because I feel okay. like it's it has the price action that we kind of wish GJ had. Does it? Yeah, because I'm looking at that break around like 1.41 and then you have a pretty clean move to the left there. Mm. And then it just retested off this um, bullish trend on the one hour. So you have this resistance here on the daily. You got a nice support. This is perfect. Price creates this resistance, a high, even though it is a resistance over here. So maybe uh, we're going to start coming down from here. But if we hold support, there's a nice, strong daily candle right there. We could be coming up to refill these wicks. So just this. Got our support right there. So far, we're holding that support, but if we break that, this was our previous resistance over here that we broke through. So anywhere in here, as you guys know, is a good place to retest and form a support, which it looks like it is right now. But we could be reacting to these previous, this uh, support over here with these wicks, and we could continue to consolidate. I don't see anything clear for me. I, I do like this four-hour candle right there. But let's look at the lower time frames. Lower time frames, yeah, we're consolidating right here. Previous support, now resistance. Now we need price to break above. It looks like we did form support over here, but we're consolidating. <clears throat> Looking for price to close above resistance right here, and you got a clean move to the left. And if it closes above that area, it's probably heading up. Let's see, respecting bullish structure. So we could consolidate over here, tap this area right in here, form support, continue right back up. But wait for the close above resistance. US 30 is below the support. Maybe it's retesting over here to continue down. GJ, I want to wait for a close below this area. It looks like we're forming resistance over here, but I'd rather wait for the close below. We don't have enough range to retest this low to take a sell. Hey, Snow. What's up? Does your, does your um, what do you call it? You, ha you have traders domain, right? Yes. Does your NT5, uh, your chart, look so different from your trading view? The uh, well, what you want to do is go over to um, trading view, type in GBP, JPY. And you see how there's multiple options for you? I have FXCM. Okay. Is, does FXCM line up with uh, – that's what I have as well. But does it line up with um, your trader's domain? Totally, like, 30-minute time frame and one hour. So it looks totally different. Okay. Let's see. I don't know why that's open. So this the one-hour candle, it, the traffic looks clean. But if you look at on your roof. I've had the same problem in the past too. So uh, let me see what the one hour looks like over here. Yeah, it looks kind of similar. I'm just looking at the previous three candles right over here. If you look to what time is this? It's the one hour. And then here's the one hour on trading view. Looks pretty I'm sorry, similar, right? Thing? Can you go back to your uh, NT5? Yep. 
one hour um, lick. Yeah, and, uh, there, uh, MT5, if you look at, there's a, like a long wick, that bearish or that like kind of like doji, can, that, yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. But on the trading view. It's not there. Know, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a pain. I mean, I do my analysis on here. Um, and when I go over to MetaTrader, normally I do the same analysis. Like I, I do a quick one. Um, but. You know, you, you just got to go by intuition. It's, this is the closest one I could find to trade, traders that may make sense. Right. Like and it, even in the, on the 30 minute, there's a gap of that bullish candle without a wick on the MT5. Um, which one? 30 minute? You said 30, 30 minute? minute time yeah. Right here? Yep. Yeah, there's a gap. So is there one on trader? Trading view? I don't see. No. My... Yeah, that's honestly kind of the annoying part of trading and, and using NT5 and doing all that kind of gets annoying. But like I said, make sure that your, your analysis lines up with traders, traders domain. I've never really noticed a um, an issue with my trading, you know, like because of that. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait to hit the gym. I was just thinking that too. I know. <clears throat> wait, what was your um what was your goal? Oh, on the, the deadlifts? Yeah. I hit three fifteen, but I'm trying to get to four hundred. Here we go. 400. What, what did I say to get to? Let's see. All right, beast. Oh, I was saying stick with 315, but but get three or four. Can you get that? Yeah, I probably can. As long as I just keep up in the weight and then feel more comfortable just lifting yeah. heavier. Now, why do you deadlift? I don't know. I think, like, when I first started, it was actually the easiest thing to me because I'm shorter and I have, like, longer arms. Mm. So then just kind of kept going with it. And then, I don't know, it's just something I, I just do casually. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know why you do it. You know, it's, it, it's incredible for strength and everything. I'm just saying, like, do you do it for golf? Do you do it for any kind of sport? Because, uh, you know, I played football in college. So it's uh, – this is something I did a lot. But now that I'm done playing football, I'm not looking to deadlift anymore uh, like I was. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I normally just find it for fun because I, I feel like a lot of people don't like the deadlift. They like squats more. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I, I guess that's just the one thing I find that's pretty fun. Dude, there's these dudes at my gym um, at Gold's, and it's like clockwork every day. Seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock. If you go in there, there's a bunch of kids in there deadlifting every single day, just like take up the squat racks and they're there for hours <laughs> yeah i don't know about every day that's that's not good on the back no yeah, they're i mean they're always training legs every single day i think they're brazilian or something but they're uh it's funny they're always over there All right gj is starting to break below this area over here my 30 minute, 15 minute closed to 8.15 right now. They got that 8 o'clock volume that pushed in with this candle. This candle right here has no bottom wick. Are we just going to continue down? Now it's breaking the low of this candle in the first, I don't know, 5, 10 seconds. So that's something, that's a setup right here that I'm willing to miss. I'm willing to be like, all right, if this just drops, I'm fine. I want some sort of a top wick to form um, or a low to be created. And then we come up and retest this area on like the 15 minute, the five minute, and then we could take this down.
but GJ overall is just a mess. So I'm not getting, I don't get from well whatsoever in this. But um, Juan, I highly recommend getting soft up decks. Yeah, I will. Just get like, um, I don't know, a session in. You could speed it up, but that, that's what's going to build your confidence. These are nice, clean candles on gold. The wicks are a little annoying, but... It looks like we're just going to continue pushing down. Oh. Giovanni, we may be right on the money with this one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yo, it looks like we're getting Alex back in the in the swing of things. Talked to him last night. That's cool, man. That's good. <laughs> So it looks like that 30 minute candle on gold made its top wick. And I was ready to go down. Yeah. It could. That's what that doji candle did. It's the second half of the 30 minute too right now. That it flipped bearish. So I moved my stops. I moved my stops above that, that 15 minute candle, the previous one. Previous 15 minute. Right here? Yeah, I got yeah, I got closed out. <laughs> Yeah, I already, I already secured 90%, so I'm not, you know, I'm not going to secure anymore or do anything like that or move my stops. If it stops me out of break even, I'm cool. But I'm just going to give it room to breathe. Because gold is tricky because you can't give it room to breathe, but then you should. Because when, when you secure, you got to move your stops right to break even on gold. This isn't something that you could play around with like TJ where it's like, all right, I secured 80% of 10 pips. Maybe I can move my stop loss down a little bit or move my stop loss up, whatever kind of trade you're in, um, and, and go about it that way. And if it comes back to your, your entry, you could just close 50% just so that you could give it room to breathe. Gold is a different nature. Gold could just wick right back up and take you right out your original stop, which is what you don't want. So gold is like... You move it to break even, but that's about the only time I'm going to move my stop loss unless it's a nice massive swing and we form a new support on the 30 minute or the one hour that I can move my stop loss up right below that. So right here on GJ, obviously we're consolidating, respecting this trend line, but it looks like we're breaking and closing below. So we could possibly get a retest right over here, get a resistance forming, and then you could take this down. But again, I would lower risk in that range. Tiger, you said you just started trading GU or you're in this right now? I forget what you said. Oh, no, I was just, like, looking at it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. EJ, what I was expecting over here is after breaking this resistance, right, created this high, comes down, forms support, breaks the nearest resistance over here, closes above it, creates a high. I was looking for a price to maybe come down, form support, and then continue up. We got about 25 pips to retest this high. If we form support there, that'd be a nice 
um, setup right there, especially if you get a strong bullish close on the 30 minute or the one hour or the 15 minute, you take this right up. But it looks like we came right below, so this is invalid and we're just kind of ranging in here. Check this out. Let's see. Ooh, got to stop that, I guess. Yep. In a matter of seconds. <laughs> That's gold. I had a feeling that happened just from listening to Giovanni. I thought I heard you got. Mm. Pips. What was that? Negative two pips. Do you secure it all? No, no, I lost negative two pips. No, I know. Yeah, I was just saying, uh, how many pips were you in profit? Just three pips. Oh, okay, yeah. I was just saying that, too, with <laughs> gold. It'll just come right back up and snap you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine. I wasn't over leveraging. So. Yeah. So it didn't really affect my account. Good. You learn from it, you journal it. Mm -hmm. Make it back tomorrow. Yeah, because usually when you see a, a, a nice clean candle to the left and you see gold passing the, the low of the previous candle, usually it just shoots down and then yeah. support and then continues up. The only thing is, um, with New York volume coming in, it's 8.23 right now. Um, I think we're just trying to find the support. And if you take a look at 18.47, 200, we got a previous resistance right here. And we formed support right there. Mm -hmm. That's now, what I was looking at now, too. Yeah, safe buys are going to be above 18.50, 500. No, and, and that, I drew my Fibonacci, and that's a golden zone. We, we, okay, we, so where did you draw it from? I drew it from the one hour. Okay, so the one hour. Yes, I was actually looking at this before. I drew it from here. Right here? Yeah. yeah this is what I was pointing out to you before. I don't think you were looking. But, yeah. So you have this right here. So th this is your golden zone, Giovanni, or is it the... That's a golden zone, 50, 60. I thought it was, you put yours right here. I know you did something a little bit differently, right? Yeah, 38.2, when it hits 38.2 and it respects it, that means it's going to just shoot up. That's right. But I still have a golden zone, 50 and 60. 50, okay. Well, it's right in the middle of 60 and 78. It tapped perfectly at the 76.4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, of course, New York volume coming in. Uh, let's see where the dollar's at. It was 30s on its way down. Form resistance over here. We tested. Continuing down. Let's see. Dollar index. It's bearish, but it looks like we came right back into this zone over here. And then also, let's someone send something in the chat. Oh, James. All right, cool. Take a look at that in a second. I want to see treasury yields kind of ranging right over here. I think it was just that New York volume. Wow, okay. Let's see, price broke down. We tested this gear. So, oh, this is the trade we were talking about on GU, right? Yeah, it was kind of risky, but yeah. So what? Okay, what? What made you take this? 
it came up kind of and then retested the uh, key level at one four one zero zero zero, and the lower time frames it was rejecting. So I said, enter. Wait, did you enter on this candle or this candle? No, no. You see where the wick came up uh, to the left, the last four hour candle. Right here? No, no, the other way. The most recent four hour. Um, is this the four yeah. hour? Yeah, this is the four hour. Yeah. Oh, so this one? Yeah. So you took it as it came up? Uh, as I started rejecting that key level in the lower time frame. Oh, over here. So it started rejecting this area? Yeah, and then it started to come down. Okay. But I put my stops to break even now, and I, I secured profits. Awesome. Did you... Okay, so you secured good. Would you secure right down here? Yeah. Did you lower your risk for this trade altogether? Sorry? Did you lower your risk for for this one? Yeah. Cool. Always setups like that, I just lower down to like maybe 0.5 or something. Yeah, it's. I mean, if if these are setups that you are convinced that you've seen before and you're comfortable with, lower your risk massively, and then eventually you could start raising your risk on these a little bit. But these are lower probability setups in here. This is um, yeah, like probably. with the trend as well. I was cautious about that. Yeah. You see, it's on like it's so bullish as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and and it's a. Uh, it's it's a risk currency. It's a, it's you know people are pouring yeah. money into these risk currencies and taking their money out of the dollar. So GU is going to be um, uh, any kind of major currency. I think is going to be bullish. Yeah, like um, I rather GU to GJ at this stage. It seems to give me more and more profits. GJ always seems to fake me out. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, GJ is a little bit harder to trade. Look at it right now. Yeah, like anyone that took this right here. <laughs> It's Look a bitch. Gold. gold? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's whatever. I, mean, I barely had anything on there. Mm. Baby position. Oh, shit. It's because I closed 50 up here. I never re-entered just because it was more of a risky. Wow. So what was this? Let's take a look at news. A USD Empire State Index? What? I'm sorry. What? Only U- there's only a one USD news on there. Um, what? Um, if- you you're, oh, there he goes. <laughs> sorry, Giovanni. Motherfucker. <laughs> what a rejection, man. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Was I not just talking about this? The fact that it'll do this. I, didn't, I mean, I wasn't saying it'll it'll reject and then all of a sudden I start going in your direction again, which it very well could in many instances. But, you know, gold, if you don't secure or if you don't move your stops to break even, it'll, it'll fuck you. Yep. Gold is fun. <laughs> gold is fun when you're winning with it. But listen, it's Monday, Giovanni. You barely took a dent in your account. You make it back tomorrow because you're fucking good. Yeah, I'm just waiting now. I'm I'm not gonna trade this little cycle candle that just came out right now. No, don't worry about this. Don't. I would stay out of this. Yeah. Winning trader. Uh, What's the treasure yield thing that you're looking at there? Ten year treasury yields. Yeah. So that's that- similar to the DXY and stuff. Isn't it? Um. So DXY is the, the U.S. currency index. Um, yeah. And then treasury yields is the complete inverse of the um, um, U.S. economy, TNX, or complete inverse of gold. So when, when this is bullish, gold is going bearish and vice versa, yeah. especially on the higher time frames. Right now, we, we tapped into 175. So this is basically what you're going to get back percentage-wise uh, interest for investing into bonds. So if the treasury yield goes down, does that indicate like like the bonds going, prices going up for the bonds? Gold, gold will probably be going up. Oh, gold. Yeah. Um, did I take a 
Yeah, I did that. Need to take one more just because gold fucked a lot of people. So I got fourteen point six pip gain. Uh, Wanna start the break even? Cool. So does on the treasure yield do gaps normally fill? The or gaps, should... it's different. Yeah. It's not even a. Uh, it's not a currency. It's just an index. Um, and I'm honestly not too sure. I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Um, yeah. but there's quite a big, quite a lot of gaps in here. Um, so I don't even know if you could play the gap fill thing or that's all you want to play. You know what I'm saying? But why do the gaps happen? Uh, just cause price just ends up, um, you know, data comes in and, and price, you know, goes from this price to this price. Like candlestick charts are only there to show you, um, the range of a candle or anything, but if if price just goes from one price to the other, that's where you're going to get that gap. So it okay. happens a lot more often on on the treasury yields and on some of these indexes than it does on currencies. Yeah. Yeah. Look at look at GJ. So we're respecting. That bullish trend over here. This is why you lower risk on Mondays. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it looks like we're respecting this area over here. Um, this is our nearest resistance. So we could draw this right here. And you'll have safer buys once we break above this resistance and then create a support and then continue up. But this is going to be uh, um, um, but you are going to be in this range. But based on this trend line over here, this could lead you to thinking, okay, maybe we are going to stay in this range, but this might be a safe entry for price to continue right back up to 154.300. It's just going to be risky. So you, you lower your risk in here. I would rather just wait for 154 or 100 to take this up. I'm going to leave gold on here real quick. I'm just going to use the bathroom. One second.
Hey, Stefano, look look at gold real quick on the 15 minute. That's the candle that we always see that the bottom of the candle acts like a support and it usually ends up filling the wake up. Yeah, yeah, I see this on GJ a lot too. Not not so much of a dramatic wick, but when, when price prints this high wick up here and then closes bearish, uh, at some point it normally fills that wick. Mm -hmm. And um, what was I looking at that? Um, maybe it didn't. It was – that's what it was doing. So I was looking at this resistance right over here. So at the time, this resistance um, – well, this candle right over here was starting to push up from that resistance. So I was thinking, all right, maybe this is the support, and now we're going to start heading up to retest these highs up here. Um, so maybe that is what we're getting. This is a little fake out. Um, but I think you're going to get – Unless you get like some sort of next support forming over here, maybe you can enter a low risk trade anticipating this wick to get filled. But I think the safe entry would be waiting for this resistance to break and get a nice support formed over here. And then you can take this out. Mm -hmm. It'll be the safer entry. But I, I, I see the same exact thing. I see this wick getting filled. GJ. Perfect rejection of this. Uh, this is why you wait for the retest. You don't get FOMO when price is starting to break below like this. You see how I said we broke the low of this candle? You know, this candle closed below support. This candle broke the low in the first 15 seconds. Like, yeah, you can grab uh, this drop like uh, 6.9 pips but ended up just rejecting because it had to create its top wick, but this ended up being the rejection wick, the bottom wick. And what happened was institutions with this wick right here, institutions could have had their take profit right down here in this order block to the left, and they could have hit their take profit, and that's a large sum of money to move a candle like that. So they could have either hit their take profit right there and then just switched and reversed and then continued up. So I'm looking for a support to be formed right over here, and this could continue up. But I don't, I don't really want to trade in this on a Monday. GJ, let's we look at the higher time frames. So as we saw over here with these wicks over here on GJ. This whole area right over here needs to be cleared. 
Got all these rejections over here, multiple rejections on the four hour. We finally came through, but now we're starting to reject and come right back into this area. So is support going to be formed somewhere around here and they continue to come right back up to retest these highs? Or what we get is a continuation of bearish price. We get a fill of this wick. Price continues down. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think there's enough bearish pressure for DJ to do something like that. I think we're going to hold support somewhere in here. We're just grabbing orders and then continuing right back up to 155. Then 155 is where you're going to start to see maybe a heavy rejection on the higher time frames. Imagine should be able to be able to tell like 10, 20 minutes into the future. Like already seeing the candles before they happen. Like that's, if we could have one superpower, that's what I would want. I mean, you can use that to your advantage of many different aspects, but like trading, oh my gosh. Just give me 10 minutes. and everything even, yeah, everything. 10 minutes, that's all I need. This all I need is, is 10 pips. What's up? Yeah. All I need is 10 pips. If you can give me 10 pips every day, I'm great. <laughs> I'm wonderful. 100%. <laughs> Put all my savings in there. <laughs> You'll over leverage on every yep. day. Uh, yeah. yeah. Each day you over leverage. Forget about 100%. discipline at that point, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, that'd be awesome. Give me that superpower and I'll make millions <laughs> off. <laughs> Have you ever seen that movie Limitless? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. He takes that like drug and he gets a crazy brain power and starts trading forex. Yeah, I mean either that or you ever see Click with Adam Sandler? Oh yeah. Give me that remote. You're right. <laughs> Let me rewind this real quick. Just fast forward real quick. All right, we're good. That's why I always like when I'm doing the rewind tool on this, and like I, it's like all right, I kind of know what's gonna happen in the future, but when it comes to certain scalps. I, you know, you, you don't know exactly how candles move, especially the farther back you go. But um, it's just like, all right, I wish like it was like this. Or it's like, all right, we already see this. All right. <laughs> now we know exactly what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Bye. It's awesome. Like, all right, grab that candle. All right, that candle's about to happen. You just get in. But. <clears throat> of course, it's got to be much tougher. Yeah, so gold is rejecting this whole area right here. And we're probably, if we hold the support, we're probably going to fill this work. I don't see anything else. Juan, what do you got today? Going to the uh, going to the shop? Yes, sir. Monday through Saturday. Be at the shop at around 8.30. Work there to about 6.30, 7. And then today starts my first day of working out again after a year and a half. Let's go. Let's go. Post it in the yep. channel. Get that going. It's going to be hard. What? It's, difficult. it's going to be hard. It, be of hard. course it's going to be hard, but it's yeah. well worth it. Getting your discipline in order or your uh, your fitness in order is the easiest way to start grabbing momentum and uh, building that discipline. I know you don't feel like going, but you got to make it happen. It'll start. You got to you gotta do what you got to do. Oh, yeah. Even if it's just like a quick workout, like limit your breaks. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, just go in, get it done, and you're done for the day. You feel like a million bucks.
So what made you pick um, New York and not London session? Uh, I don't I don't trade London. I trade uh, New York, and that's basically an Asian. Uh, when I get the the setups that I like, um, but it's just the 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 schedule. I don't want to be a slave to the market. I'm cool waking up. I'm an, I'm a morning person, so I'll, I'll wake up early, get my trading done. I love that idea of you know scalping in the morning. You're done with your day by nine o'clock. That's awesome. Yep. And you go on and, and move on to other things like your business or, um, you know, some of you guys have jobs. It's, it's, uh, it's worth it. But um, we're not getting many other things. Maybe we're retesting this area or we're going to respect this resistance right here. Continue down. Wow. Gold just fucked us. Did you look at that? Gold's kind of respecting this channel over here. <whistles> Giovanni's pissed. <laughs> wow. What is creating these this bearish push? <sighs> all right guys i'm probably gonna head off um nothing much as far as opportunities go but guys have an awesome day remember it's monday first day of the week get your get your shit straight go go work out um record your ars right alan make sure that you're you're basically having that positive self-talk that you're always on top of your shit it's gonna make you feel so much better about yourself uh, but it's Monday. It's the start of a new week. And just try to get these things going every single day and get this week under your belt. Make sure that every single day you're on top of your shit and that's it. Stick in your stuff. Juan, some of this stuff uh, I'm talking about, like ARs and stuff, you'll see in the beginning part of the course, the mental mm -hmm. foundation part. Um, but it's, it's going to be big for you as, as far as journaling, um, keeping track of your thoughts while you're trading, all that stuff. It's all going to translate to... 
uh, more profitable trading and, and, and being more disciplined in the market, which is most important. All Thank right, you. so. Thank you. Um, enjoy the course. Let me know how you like it. Tiger, Geo, Alan, I'll see you guys soon. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, Alan, we'll, uh, whenever you want, we'll hop on that Zoom and, and we'll yeah. continue going over. I, I know it's probably late for you right now, but. Um, no worries. Yeah, we'll tomorrow find time. What was that? No worries. We will find the time. Yeah, 100%. It's only Monday. All right, guys. Have a good one. Right. See you guys later. Thanks. Thanks, baby. See you guys. See you guys.